All right, and with that, we'll move on to our last speaker of this little block. Um, we have Garrick Edenbui here with us to talk about seamless data-driven reporting with epoxy. So um, I see that Garrick, I can see your slides and you're unmuted, so please take it away. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so my name is Garrick. I work with uh, the Shiny team now at Posit uh, Software. Um, but today I'm here with, with you um, as a data person who works with data and puts that data and summaries and things from that data into reports, or namely into text. Um, so uh, my, my talk today is about seamless data-driven reporting with epoxy, which is a package that I'm going to introduce today. Um, and uh, oops, I want to start by sharing with you an interesting fact that I learned when I was looking for the perfect quote to open this presentation. Uh, it comes from the Department of Labor in the United States, and I'll just read it. It says, a study of child care prices in 2,360 U.S. counties across 47 states shows that child care prices for a single child range from $4,810 for school age home based care in small counties to $15,417 for infant center based care in very large counties. This is equivalent to between 8% and 19.3% of median family income per child in paid care. If you're anything like me, one part of you is now saying, wow, children are expensive, uh, at least in the United States. Uh, the other part of you is probably a little distracted thinking about the raw data behind this sentence. You're probably noticing the qualifiers like for school age home based care in small counties or for infant center based care in very large counties. Um, you're definitely well, you're, I mean, you're thinking about how these qualifiers map to decisions about how the data was summarized and you're definitely thinking about all of the numbers in this quote like 2360 counties 47 states. $4,000, $15,000, and the 8 and 19%. And at this point, you're completely distracted uh, from the underlying part of this quote, uh, thinking about the process behind, uh, behind how we got this, these two sentences. Like, where did the data come from? How hard is it to clean? How did it go from rows in a table to this sentence in the report? And I mean that literally like, what happens if we find an error or a state updates a CSV file somewhere? Like whose job is it to come back to this sentence and update it and how do they do that? Um, these are the things I think about a lot. I, I like to think about them. Um, and I, I like to open this conversation today just reflecting on how many important decisions go into um, into our reports and how many decisions are, are so tightly packed into the words that we write. Um, and all of these decisions manifest for us in, uh, in a data frame or two. Uh, it's extra satisfying when they're tidy like this one. Uh, and this table plugs in really nicely into, into uh, well, this data frame plugs in really nicely into dense things like tables, which we just saw, or, or plots, um, which as data scientists, we tend to lean on pretty heavily. So this table we could, uh, or the data behind this table, we could uh, make an interactive plot, um, you know, like this map showing uh, US, show, showing the median yearly price of infant center-based care across the United States. And, and this map is great. This is a great tool. Right? It's even interactive, right? But it has its place. Um, no reasonable person is going to use this map to end up at the conclusions that we presented in our, in the quote at the beginning. Um, here's another example. This is just a, uh, a basic horizontal bar plot. Um, I just took the, the summary table and I pass it to ggplot mapping child care costs to the x axis and the child's age group to the y axis. And I faceted by county size and I set the bar color to the type of care, which is either home based or center based. Um, getting to here, uh, well, first of all, this, you know, plot doesn't you know, it could look better, right? Um, uh, but getting to here only takes a few lines of code, right? We just give it to ggplot and we kind of write code that do the things that I said. Um, but uh, but if we're actually going to present this plot somewhere, we, we do a little bit more work. Uh, ggplot gives you all kinds of tools, uh, you know, and first about, you know, how you lay out data and map data to visual bits, but it also gives you a lot of tools to uh, to update labels and text. So with a few more lines of code, we can end up with a plot that looks a lot better. We can give the x axis or the x y axis and the legend appropriate labels. 
we can uh, format the x-axis in US dollars. We can give the facets and legends better, uh, better labels. And we end up with a plot like this. So I haven't changed anything about the theme, but this is already a, uh, a much more um, pleasant plot to, to look at. It's, um, it's much closer to being ready to be published. And um, you know, depending on the report, I might stop right here. Um, one thing that uh, I think is really interesting about this, that I, or one thing that I really like, is that we didn't really have to change our data at source at all, right? So behind this, we have this, this data frame, and all the changes that we made were sort of like at the last second, right before we turned it into a plot. So I, thinking about all of these things brought me to work on Epoxy um, as a tool that will help you handle these last mile sort of transformations from your source data into the text that you're writing. Um, I really want this tool to be seamless to blend to help you blend data into reports and, and, and into apps and um, and it, uh, and it also would be great if we could uh, if it can help us um, be reusable so things that we write in one place we can reuse in other places just swapping out the data. Fortunately, there's an R package that uh, works pretty well for this kind of thing called glue and um, the advantage so th this package is great, but it's kind of limited to strings in R. Um, its biggest limitation is really that it's developer oriented, uh, which means it does one thing really, really well and has basically no dependencies, so it's a great package. Um, and, it, and you can kind of think of epoxy as an extension package for glue, which also explains the name and the hex sticker. So you can install epoxy from Crayon, uh, or you can load it from, uh, from GitHub, and, um, and then you can uh, use it with library epoxy. Um, and ideally you'd put this into an R Markdown document, but uh, you can use it in R scripts and Shiny apps. Um, I've loaded glue because I'm going to use glue, but, um, but you don't have to load glue in order to, to take advantage of epoxy. So uh, just to prove that there's no magic, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna just show you where this data came from. It came from Tidy Tuesday, uh, which is a fantastic resource and you can download the data pretty quickly with these uh, few lines of codes. So, you know, uh, it gives you county a table about the counties it gives you a table about child care costs um, it gives you a huge data dictionary uh, which takes a long time to read through and figure out which exact columns you want to use but once you do um, we we basically just use a little bit of dplyr in, in the tidyverse to filter down to 2018 the year of 2018 make sure we're using states that are um, where uh, th that actually reported into this data set uh, we pick out the the variables of interest, population, income, price, and county size, and um, and then we do a bunch more work, and we pivot, and we get everything kind of into the right spot. And now we are finally here at our tidy table. Um, from there, we can like pull out little pieces that we want. So, in this quote, involves taking the sort of minimum from from like the summary of all of the different categories, the minimum cost of childcare and the maximum cost of childcare. So um, I've now segregated into two small tables that have county size, uh, uh, childcare type, age, cost, and um, percentage of median household income. And then uh, really quickly, here's just a little summary of the number of counties and number of states. So how do we get this into pros? So we are going to use our markdown. Uh, so if you're using our markdown, you, you sort of, so I have the quote already, so we're gonna kind of work our way backwards, right? Um, this would be like lines in an R Markdown document. I've broken it up into a bunch of diff like individual lines so that we can see the differences as I move through it. Um, and you, so you probably wouldn't write it exactly like this, but it'll help us follow the changes. So first of all, when you're writing the sentence, you don't actually know these numbers in advance, right? So you're gonna, so I'll just put blanks where those numbers would be. And now that I'm thinking about it, we actually don't know which size of county is going to have the highest uh, childcare costs. And we also don't know uh, which type of childcare or um, or educational center, you know, would have the highest or lowest. And we also don't know which age group it would involve. So these are all things that we like don't know and we want to bring them in from our data. So the way you do that in our markdown would be to use um, inline code chunks. You, um, you get to uh, wrap the variable of interest in uh, these back tick, these like back ticks, but you add this little R in front. It looks a little bit like that. Right, so we can use num and counties, number of counties, number of states, um, 
and then we could fill in with our, our minimum cost information. We could fill in with our maximum cost information, right? And now we, we now we have uh, an awesome plot, right? Uh, or sorry, awesome text. It, almost. It, this looks. This is good. Like this is amazing. It is amazing that we can do this, uh, but it's also just fine. Like there's some things that are bugging me here, like two thousand three hundred and sixty or this odd formatting of this number. And these are supposed to be percentages, right? So. Uh, that's going to bug me and we have to fix it. Um, one way you could do this is you could write inline code or you could just like write more code in line. So here I've gone through and I've added the format function and I've added arguments like big mark and I've um, done some rounding down here and I've, you know, a couple other things, uh, rounding and multiplying by 100 and, and stuff like that. Um, okay. Uh, so now it's time for my spicy hot take of the talk, which uh, I guess I'll actually give a spiciness rating of just one pepper. This probably isn't that spicy. Okay, write R code where it can be R code. That means, so like here, this, we're writing text, and then we put a whole bunch of R code inside of this string. Um, uh, I'm not a fan. Um, a better idea is to put it in an R chunk. So in, in an R our chunk is basically the same as like putting it in our script and there it's like colored and it you get hints and you get all sorts of stuff um and that's great um and it, but an even better option would be to use uh use some formatting functions that are really good at doing this thing and and uh are you know can do something like take your dollar and or take your unit that represents a dollar and actually turn it into a dollar which also is then easily translated to the other currencies like the euro and other things okay um so here, like, like how, why is this better? So here I'm hovering over um, scales dollar and I get, you know, IDE, the IDE is helping me out and it's showing me, um, you know, what what arguments go to that function. And I, I think you'll get a little bit of help from our studio if you're writing inline R code in chunks, but you won't get this much help. Um, plus also like static code utilities and things like that are not going to find your code that's in. Um, inline chunks. So uh, I'd summarize this up as also inline code is for the simplest code that you cannot possibly mess up on. Like, you know, you know, you're what you're doing it is going to work. Uh, and you're not going to make a typo, right. Uh, so how do we do this with epoxy? So going back to this, uh, before we added in all the formatting, we're going back to just it's inline, uh, inline art chunks. Um, first of all, you add library epoxy somewhere in your document, and then you can use an epoxy chunk. So this is a little, this is probably the one weird thing that epoxy asks you to do is to put your art, your markdown in, in, uh, in a chunk with the engine of epoxy. Um, but I, but I, I, I hope we can all get past that. So the next bit is to find all these parts where you've used inline R code. And we're going to replace them instead of doing backtick r space variable and a backtick we're going to put uh, curly braces around the things so just immediately I, I feel myself getting a little bit calmer this is a little bit easier to read i think um and uh in case you're like well what is like is this does this really work one of the really cool parts about this is that if you're as you're typing um and you get to the part uh like here where I've trying to type costs, you get autocomplete um, in this in this chunk. Um, this is the thing that uh, the IDE does now actually for inline R code, but it didn't used to. So this was pretty, this was cooler like two years ago. Um, okay, but what do you get out of this? You get uh, basically the same thing. Like it's pretty close. Uh, it's it's pretty close. Uh, it was it's nicer to write as part of it, but um, but what we really want is we want to we want to be able to do this formatting step too. So let's look at this. Uh, let's go back to our inline R code. So I have cost dollar max inside of inline R code, and to make it an epoxy chunk, I wrapped it in braces and curly braces. And uh, here's the cool part that epoxy does is you can add a little dot, and then a name of a transformation that you want to perform on the thing that's in in that uh, in that braced section. So here I want to make costs max a uh, money i want to represent it as money um i want to turn mhi percent into a percentage and um and i want to do uh i want to apply comma to n counties 
Um, this one probably seems a little bit weird. Uh, I mean, you probably know what this is doing, but it comes from scales. Uh, so if you ever use scales for ggplot, it comes from the label comma function. Um, and we're actually using scales behind the hood. That's why I wanted to kind of show you this. So if I go back into my chunk and here, I've made it just a little bit more, uh, more normal looking I, without all the, the new lines. You can see I've now added um, things like comma and, and counties, and I've made dollar cost max and percent dot percent for this percentage, right? Um, and now I have uh, a pretty nice, nice quote that looks a lot more like what we want at the end. Um, and one of the things I really like about this is that we're in, you know, these transformations aren't happening. We're not having to do this somewhere else. We can kind of leave our data alone um, and it just plugs in nicely here. Okay, so this is all powered by glue. And um, which means that also all of these, that the epoxy chunk that I just showed you is also a function called epoxy. So glue does use the same syntax. The syntax comes from glue where you have the, the braced expression that, um, that gets replaced, and um, and here here's where like it don't write code in strings, like really don't write code in strings, as much as you can avoid it, right? Um, so epoxy is a drop-in replacement for for glue. It changes a few little things to make it easier to use in, in reports in places where like we know that you're wanting to write text and you also have you have work to do and you want to get it done, right? Um, so this syntax is not part of this dollar dot dollar syntax is not part of glue. It's not something glue does. It's something that uh, epoxy adds on top of glue. And it's also, I should mention, it's heavily inspired by the CLI package by um, Gabor Sassardi, uh, which is an awesome package if you are looking for making command line tools. OK, so these are the same thing. You, the, uh, the epoxy chunk in the, our markdown document is the same as calling epoxy uh, the epoxy function. So the same ideas uh, work in both places. So um, here we go with inline transformations. Here you can see that they they work like the do in the chunk. How are they? How are they? Like how do you how do you change the defaults? Right. So one of the things I'm not really liking is that this is a you know it gives you sense. So um, it's done through the transformer argument, which is actually the same thing as the transformer argument for glue, and we're using the transform inline, which gives you these transformations. And I can um, then say the, the dot dollar transformation is use, uses scales label dollar by default, but I can also add in there accuracy equals 10. And now my, um, my for this particular transformation, we're gonna round up to tens. Um, you might wanna do that like everywhere. Like say every time I use dot dollar, I always want it to be just like whole dollars, in which case you can use epoxy transform set and give it the trans these transformations, which then become the default transformations uh, anywhere that you use epoxy. Um, here's some other cool things you can do. Here I've just grabbed out uh, the age, or like summarize the age, and I want to say like children were in the age groups, and they give this. So age is age here is a vector. This part right here is a vector, and uh, glue is vectorized. So you get like by default you get four strings um, with each level. But what I really want is to have it say infant, toddler, preschool, and school age. And so this is the dot and transformation. I might want to say or uh, infant, toddler, preschool, or school age. And I can use the dot or and transformation. And what if, like, just for this example, I decide, you know what, I really want it to say two uh, instead and, and do that. That doesn't exist. That's not something that, um, that epoxy gives you by default. But the good news is you can make it yourself. So using epoxy transform set again, I can define the dot two transformation as a function. It it uh, takes one argument that gets the the result of this, and it performs some transformation to it. It uh, collapses it, and then we say the last one is going to be two, and now it's a uh, two. So any transformations that are like a thing that you want to do right at, um, that like are specific to your report, these this is the way to go. Um, you can also nest these transformations, so you can say. I want to to do that too. I want to do that to transformation, but I want to apply title case first uh, and we get title cased variables. Um, and uh, and then so a few other things.
the other the the transformer thing is kind of neat and you can um you can actually chain transformer so here i've said i want to use my inline transformer so i get the dot date transformations but i also want to bold every replacement that you do i want to make a bold and um and that's where you get this markdown um that would be bold in the end so what if what about latex latex is uh supported uh, there's this weird thing that happens where like you have to escape the 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 braces and I'm just going to show you jumping to the end. You can use epoxy latex and uh, it will change the default so the the delimiter becomes these um, open alligators. Uh, similarly for HTML. Um, it become it's two braces. Um, there's a whole lot more that uh, epoxy can do, and um, so I, I'd recommend checking out the slides and taking a look, or uh, going to see the package documentation. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, we have a discussion board, um, and you can find me online at uh, these places, and I uh, appreciate you listening, and I hope uh, epoxy helps make your reports more fun. That was really fantastic. I have used a lot of inline code and glue, but I was not aware of the great functionality in this new package. So thank you.